Okay, guys. So uh, what we're gonna what I'm calling this, and I just came up with this like yesterday, is like the PRG business strategy, right? And that's basically what it is: the business strategy of how we run our business, how we've been able to sell probably in the last four or five years, probably over 500 properties already, just on the real estate side, um, hundreds and hundreds of transactions on the mortgage side. But it's it's really the overview, right, of how we're running everything, and just understanding that you have to have a strategy, right? If you want to have a, a predictable business something that continues to produce something that you can scale there has to be a strategy and for us i know early on in our career we did a lot of things by just winging it right jason yeah like right like our first probably 12 years of our career it was just basically grind right grind mode like we come in we make calls we close deals we go on appointments and we just show up every day and do that and that works right that works to a certain level of success but what happens is you can only grind that hard for so long before you start getting burnt out, right? So it's about not just working hard, but also working smart. There has to be different layers of your business that's going to add to the overall success. And that's really what it's all about. And, and the way that we've found out about this is by getting involved in coaching and being coached by teams who are doing, you know, three, four, five, ten times as much business as we were. Um, and it's really just, um, it's, it's simple, simple concept, but you know, there's a lot of things that need to happen to execute at a high level. All right. So I'm going to run through this. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick, just with some quick notes Where are we at here. Um, so uh, one thing we're going to look at guys is kind of the overall strategy, right? What does it take to build a high performing business? And this is something that I've realized over time is you need people, you need leads, right? Leads or opportunities, and you need systems. At the very, very core, at a very, very basic, basic level, right? To have a business that's constantly pumping out transactions, you need leads to come in all the time, right? There has to be leads coming in from somewhere. It doesn't really matter where the, what the leads are, right? Um, you need people that can service those leads, right? And then you need systems to really make the process more efficient and duplicatable leads, people, and systems. And the goal, right, when I say this is I want you guys to kind of change your mindset of how you look at the business, right? Because when you understand like the overall strategy, hopefully you're going to change the way you look at everything and, and, and the activities you're doing. So let's kind of break those down, right? Like if I want to sell, you know, 20 or 30 homes a year, probably one person could do that, right? Like if they're grinding, working really hard, one person could sell 20, 30 homes. We've seen it. We've seen people sell more homes, right? With one person. But when you want to get past like 30, 40, 50 homes, you need more people. That's just the bottom line, right? Because there's only a certain amount of hours you have in a day. You can only be certain places at one time. You need more people, right? You need an assistant. You need a showing agent. You need uh, someone that's helping you set appointments, whatever, right? There's different you know, levels to what kind of people you need but you need more people. That's just the bottom line, right? To sell a lot of homes, you need more people. Um, so we just need to understand that. You also need leads coming in, right? If you don't have a predictable lead source and you're just getting random leads here and there, or you're banking your whole business off of just referrals, are referrals predictable and scalable? Not really, right? It's, it's very hard to say, okay, you know, my database and everyone I know is going to give me X amount of referrals. Maybe like if you have a huge database and you get it to that point, but in the beginning, it's, it's not really predictable, right? Some agents that say, well, I only do, I only work off referrals. I, I guarantee you they didn't start their business that way. That's just the bottom line, right? Maybe if they've been in the business 15 or 20 years and now they have a solid referral base, then they, they got into that point. So you need leads, right? Now, you're also gonna need systems, right? The systems are 
what is going to allow you to have a duplicatable process, right? When you go to McDonald's and you order a cheeseburger, they don't change the way they make it every single time. It's the same exact way every single time, right? Even from how you go through the drive-through, even from what they say, even from what's on the menu, even from the uniform they wear, the cooking time. Like if you, McDonald's is like a genius business, right? That's why they sell millions of hamburgers. It's like the one business that is just built off systems. That's why they've been able to scale across the world. But you need duplicatable systems so that the client experience and the process is pretty much the same every single time, right? If you're like, well, for this client, I do it this way. And for this client, I do it this way. And for this client, I'm going to try this other way. What's going to happen to your business? It's going to fail, right? It's not going to be a consistent, a consistent uh, experience for the client. It's and, huh? It's going to drive you mad, right? Like there has to be certain things. And, you know, we're not going to go deep on this, but if you look at our whole business, right, there's ways that, you know, we send a can response in. There's a... There's ways that we track, right? And there's things that the back end does. Like they have a whole checklist, right? When you get a buyer in contract, there's a 50 point checklist that they do for every single client. When you have a listing coming up, there's a hundred point checklist from what we do to get the listing ready, from the flyers, from all these different things, right? These are all duplicatable systems so that now all we got to do is just continue to add clients to that pipeline and they just duplicate the process every single time, right? And we can get a pretty predictable outcome. Right. So people, leads and systems. At the very basic level, that's what you need. Right. So when you understand that, that that's what you need, then you can also say, OK, well, if I need leads, we start looking at different lead sources. Right. A lead is now just the lead. Right. When it comes into my into my world, there are a million ways to get leads. Right. The big one for us is online leads. That's probably like half of our business comes from online leads and the other half of our business comes from SOI, right? Friends, family, referrals, things of that sort, right? I would say that's from our database and our friends and family. And then it's, it's designed that way, right? It's not that by default. It's some, this is what we like to keep into. It's designed, right? It's designed that way. In the beginning, you know, say six years ago, we were trying to get our team really going at a high level. We were trying a thousand different things. I was doing pay-per-click advertising. I was doing Facebook leads. I was doing Zillow. I was doing realtor.com. We were doing open houses. We were trying to start a farm and door knock. And we were trying to do like all these other little things, right? We're trying to do events, right? And all these other things. And then what happens is that you do all these things at a very low level, right? Because you're spread so thin. You're going wide instead of really going deep. And that resulted in like spending $30,000 in one year on, on Zillow and not closing a single deal, right? Our first year doing Zillow, we spent 30 grand on Zillow and didn't close one deal. Think about that. Why? Because we were just throwing money at it, right? There was no system built around it of how we we're going to handle these leads. And we were also doing 10 other things. So we weren't really going deep on any of them, right? So when it comes to leads, you know, what you're going to see is if you look out, if you look online or you talk to other people, you're going to get a different answer from every single person, right? One person may want to do a farm and like, oh, we're killing it. We do a farm. That's all we do, right? Um, some person's like, no, I'm online leads. Some person's like, I only do open houses. I'm the king of open houses or I only door knock, right? Kevion, you know, one of my buddies, they built their business off door knock, right? They sell mil, you know, multi-million dollar homes and it's all based off door knocking. And if you talk to him, he talks crap about Zillow. He's like, he makes that part of his marketing, the homes you don't see on Zillow. And yeah, I bet you're not going to get this from your Zillow agent, right? And that's all part of his marketing and his agenda. But really what he does every day is they pound the pavement every single day. They've built their business off of door knocking and also cold calling, Fizbo's and stuff like that. And it works. They sell hundreds of millions of dollars worth of but that's all they do at a high level right and then you got people like us right we've sold hundreds of million dollars of property from online leads right so what i'm trying to get at guys is that a lead at the end of the day it's just a way for someone to come into your world it doesn't really matter how you got the lead 
it's just getting this person to come into your world and raise their hand and say, hey, I'm looking to buy, I'm looking to sell, I'm looking to refinance, whatever it might be. And there's a million different ways to do it. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to make the mistake that a lot of agents do and make the mistake that we made early on of trying to do too many things because you're not, you're going to be, what is it, jack of all trades, master of none, right? You don't want to do that, right? That's not the quickest way to the finish line. That's not the quickest way, quickest path to success. The quickest path to success is picking one or two things and just going really, really super deep on that. And we learned that the hard way by wasting a bunch of money and wasting time. And once kind of we got exposed to higher level coaching, like the freaking light bulbs went off, right? And at that point we said, hey, let's go back and look at our business and really analyze where the deals have come from. And then also what style we like, right? Because you may like, there's a thing where like, what do you like to do? And then also what gets the phone ringing? And then what's more efficient, right? And then do I have money to invest in this? Am I, if I don't have money, then I'm going to be doing a lot of sweat equity, right? Where maybe I got to go pound the pavement and I got to do a lot more labor intensive things because I don't have money to invest in a lead source, right? So usually when people start making some money and closing some deals, that's when they take their money and put it to work for them. Um, so for us, we go back and analyze our business and we see that always consistently, at least half of our business came from our friends and family and our referral sources, right? I call those all SOI, sphere of influence, whatever it had. The other half, right? The other 50%, it was like 40% was like online leads. And then 10% was like these miscellaneous, an open house, uh, out of state referral, uh, of someone on social media, which that's still like an SOI bucket, right? Or like uh, someone landed on our website or someone called me from Yelp or something like that, right? It was a small percentage of those miscellaneous things. But if I had to really just look at our business, it's almost like half from sphere of influence, half from online leads. Once that kind of light bulb went off, then it's like, well, why don't we just go deep with those two things, right? Why don't we just go deep with those two things um, and like scrap all the other things, right? And just go deep with those because those are working. How do we scale those? How do we, how do we deep? go deeper. How can we buy more leads? Right. And, and start scaling that process out. So I want you guys to wrap your head around a lead is a lead. Some leads cost money, right? Like we see right now with Zillow flex, they cost money, not up front. They cost money on the back end. There's some leads that we pay for up front, which costs money out of pocket every single month that we pay for. Um, so no matter what you're doing, a lead is someone coming into your world. So now you got to think like, how can I work smarter and not necessarily harder, right? And that's really where online leads for us, it's a really high leverage point because by the time you go out there and door knock a whole neighborhood, I could have already gotten like 10 or 20 leads to come and hit my inbox, right? It's not that any one of them is better. It's a matter of like, how can I do more in the same amount of time? Right. By the time you go do an open house. Right. And I'm not saying don't do these. I'm not saying they're bad, but it's just understanding that this is what we're this is the game we're playing. Right. I can already have 20 leads hit my inbox in an hour and it took you an hour to set up the open house, three hours to host it, an hour to close down. And then you got to call all those people. Right. So it's just a matter of trading time for dollars. Yeah, the online leads are going to cost me some money at the end, but I have more volume. But I have more shots on goal, right? Creates referrals. Creates referrals, all those different things, right? So those are just things that, that we look at. So the next time someone says, or you see someone, remember, there's a lot of ego that comes into our business, right? Like you see someone online doing this or killing it, or remember, 90% of what they post online is, is not true. Um, it's the highlight reel, right? I think we all know that, but for some reason we don't, right? Uh, no, but what happens is it comes from ego, right? It's like, oh, that looks cool how they're doing it. I want to be that guy, right? But what you should do is you should say, well, that looks cool. I want to research that a little bit more. I really want to understand how they're doing it to see if that's right for me, right? That looks cool, but let me peel back and let me dissect the numbers. Let me see how much time, energy, return on investment. This is like now looking at it as a business, right? 
or like, you know what, like that guy always closes deals, but doesn't really look cool what he's doing. Right. Like, I don't know, maybe he's on to something, right? Like, I don't know. Right. So there's, it, it goes both ways, but the next time you get that itch to go, like, think something else is better. Think about this conversation right here. Right. That's what I want. That's what I want to get at is really do the numbers, the math, and really look at this as a business and see if that's right for you, right? Because sometimes we start chasing things when we got the stuff right in front of us, where if we just put the time into that, like we said, going deeper and not going wider, right? We would have crushed it already with this, right? And that's why like when, when even some of the team and even leadership brings like an idea to the table, that's why we're really skeptical, right? because we've been trained we've been trained that way we weren't always skeptical it was like oh cool idea let's go try it and i was i was that guy i'm not anymore right i learned the hard way um so it's not that we're closed-minded or shooting things down it's that we have something that's working already right um so if we're going to add on any other pillar any other lead source or any other thing like we need to make sure we're going 100 percent on these first before we add anything else because then we'll be yeah right and you slowly add you slowly scale Okay, so now once we understand that, right, we understand what it takes to run the business. We understand, you know, people, leads, systems. Then we break down the concept of like, really what's the cycle, right, of how we generate business, how we service business, and how we just create this duplicatable kind of sales cycle. And that's a concept called attract, convert, deliver. Um, and for the sake of time, we're just going to, we're just going to spend a little bit of time on this because it's, we're almost getting there, but I just want you guys to understand on a basic level, attract, convert, deliver. And then I like to say, just repeat. So this concept of attract, convert, deliver, what it means is, is the attract part, right? Attract part is all our lead generation. How do you get people to come into your world, right? We talked about leads and which lead sources are optimal, but basically at the top of your funnel, right? You're basically trying to attract business to come into your world. That's what you're doing, right? So for us, SOI and online leads, people show up to our world. That's how we attract them, right? Everyone understand that, right? Very basic concept. You attract them. Now, after you attract the lead into your world, your job, right, you're going to meet with them, you're going to do a presentation, right? That's all part of your conversion, right? So I got the lead to come into my world. That's the attract phase. Now I'm going to go on a listing appointment. I'm going to go on a buyer consultation. That's now my process of converting them, right? Before I get to the, you know, the consultation, that's where the follow-up, the nurturing, setting the appointment, using the campaigns, doing all the text follow-up, all those different things we're doing to book the appointment. That's all part of the conversion cycle, right? So you can look at the different areas, right? The attract, convert, deliver, and figure out which things you need to work on. Right now, we're attracting a lot of leads. Like we said we had 700 leads in, in January that came into our, our inbox, right? From all the different sources. So the attract part, we got that down, right? We got to track down the part where everyone needs to get trained up. And this is because we have agents at different levels is the convert part, right? Is I got all these leads. How do we convert these leads at a higher level? How do we book more appointments? How do we get more people to meet with us when they do meet with us? How do we show a lot of value so that they want to work with us? Does everyone have their listing presentation down? Does everyone have their buyer consultation down so that when that lead does meet with you, you have a very, very high chance of converting them to a client, right? So all of that stuff falls into the convert aspect of the business. Who in here thinks they need to work on their conversion? Anybody? Like think they can improve on their conversion? We always need to improve on their conversion. Okay. Or is there anybody in here that says like, no, nah, you put a lead in front of me, I'm closing that bad boy. Like, well, that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, All right. Gotta have that confidence. Right? I think there's, there's, there's a higher chance of closing that deal with skill. 
I, I think it's right. a, it's you're constantly got to be working at that skill. Yeah. Right. I think definitely. I mean, I know like someone like Mixie's confident. I give the lead even close. Yeah. I know. Right. But I think it's just constantly working at that craft, working on that skill. Right. Because if the market changes, things change. It's a moving target. You got low inventory. You got high inventory. You got higher rates. Whatever it is, you're gonna constantly be kind of just just building that craft. Now. I'll Go ahead. If I could chime in on that, the main thing to think about is, is real estate's practice, right? It's just like as we, we see doctors, they call it a practice, right? We know that they're great at doing dentistry or they're brain surgeons, but they still call it a practice because there's always something to learn, right? And they're always diving in in that growth mindset to grow and become the best uh, because they care about people. Yeah. Right. And, and, and I'm going to, you know, pick on Mitch and challenge, like Mitch said both, right? Yeah, I need to work on my conversion, but now I'll close anything, right? Because that's, that's his confidence and right. And, and his ego and that make, that makes him great. But for the sake of, of training, if Mitch were to be like, no, I'm going to close everyone and not think to himself, I got to constantly work on my conversion. The, the business is getting harder. It's getting more competitive. Things are changing, like Jason said, right? So you have to also have that student mindset of, I need to constantly be improving my skill because it's not a linear thing, right? It isn't like you get to this level and the business stays exactly the same. If that were true, then yeah, then you get to a level and you're, you're good, right? But right now you get to this level and the bar's here and then next year the bar got raised because all these new things came out, right? Or the, the market changed or the inventory or whatever it might be. So you have to constantly be sharpening your skills to stay ahead of that curve because clients right? The consumers are getting smarter, more information's available. Things are online, right? Like when a lot of times you meet with the client, they know just as much as you know, right? And so the value of the agent has also changed, right? So any agent who gets to a point in their career where they think they've learned it all, or they don't see the value in education and refining their skills, or they don't see the value in just role-playing every day, right? That's where you slowly start to, to deteriorate because there's going to be someone that's Younger, smarter, more hungrier, more efficient, knows knows the game more, knows social media more than you do, right? And knows how to leverage all the different technology and tools that are available today and is going to surpass you because you're just sitting idle, right? Thinking, oh, I already know it, right? So that's why, like, even Jason and I, like, we make it a point to stay on top and enroll in education and do coaching, even though we have a quote-unquote successful business, right? With what the outsider would say, oh, you guys are crushing it or whatever, right? For us, it's like, right? We had a coaching, four-hour coaching session on Friday. So that same mentality needs to be applied to everyone else because that's the only way that you're going to take that convert aspect, right? We talked about track, convert, deliver. That's the only way you're going to increase your conversion is by getting sharper, by getting smarter, by staying ahead, by using technology, by being educated more so that ultimately you can provide more value to the consumer right? Or to the agent or whoever it is that comes into your world, your new recruit or whatever it might be, right? So you got to stay on top of that. Uh, so attract, convert, deliver. And this is, these are the things where now like we can go in and like pick stuff apart, right? Like if we have the data and we see like appointment set, met, sign, we can start seeing like where the kinks are in the system, right? We, we almost want to look at our system as like a water hose, right? Have you ever had a water hose and the water's coming out and then like there's a kink in the water hose? You know, some water might come out still, but it's not flowing like it was before, right? Or did anybody do that old school thing where you bend the water hose like to create pressure and spray your car down? You create your own little power washer, right? I remember I used to do that. Um, but there's going to be some kinks that come up in the business, right? In your whole, you know, water hose there. Some of them might stop the water completely. Some of them will stop it a little bit. And that's where the data is important, right? When we know like, appointment set, met, sign. We know our conversion rates. We know all these different things. We can now see where the kink is at, fix that, train on it, put a system in place and free it up so that it continues to flow, right? That's all part of this conversion process. Any questions on this part? Okay. So you converted this lead, right? You got them into your world. You attracted them however you did. You converted them to a client right? You did this big old promise on your appointment, you know, the loyalty agreement, the listing agreement, all these different things that you promised. Now, what happens after that? You got to deliver, right? You have to deliver on your promise. If you told them like, I'm going to do steps 
one through 20, and this is why you want to work with me, and this is why I'm better than the other agent, you now have to deliver. Now, if you're only selling, you know, a handful of homes a year, you have a lot of time to handle all parts of the delivery process, right? But when you want to sell 30, 40, 50 plus homes, you can no longer deliver by yourself, right? This is where people come into place. This is where an admin team comes into place. This is where a transaction coordinator comes into place. This is where an ISA comes into place. This is where a marketing person comes into place. All the different people in our organization on the back end, this is where they come into place. Your loan processors, all these different people helping you deliver what you promised up front to this client. Now, here's the thing about delivery, and here's the here's the part where a lot of agents go wrong, is in order to have people cost money, right? There's a cost you gotta pay, right? If you wanna build a business and run it at a high level and, and do big numbers, you have to have people in place, which means there has to be an investment in people. Now, for you guys on the team, you guys are investing that not up front, you guys are investing that through commission splits, right? There's a certain split you have with the team so that we can provide all these things on the back end so that your business can run more efficiently, right? And you can scale it, right? It's either you're gonna pay out of pocket or you're gonna join a team that is already doing this and you're gonna invest some of your commissions, right? To have all these services provided for you. Now, you can have the best attraction, the best follow-up, the best conversion, you hit it out of the park with your appointment. But what happens when you give a client a shitty transaction, a shitty client experience? You get a bad review, right? No repeat clients, no referrals, right? You know, even though like your intentions were great, right? Even though like, you're like, no, I'm, you know, I stay on top of my clients, right? Like I do all this stuff. I go the extra mile, but it's just simply when you get to a certain level of production, you have a certain amount of clients you're working with. There's no way you can do it all by yourself. And there's a lot of agents out there that are one man shows trying to do it all by themselves. And either two things happen, either they're trying to do it all by themselves and their clients have a shitty experience or they don't, they can't scale their business. They can't take on more clients because they're doing it all by themselves. They're so busy working on their clients that they can't take on new clients. And that's where you have like the limits, right? That's where people hit their limits. So the only way to fix that is to add people in the mix and to start letting go of certain things and start delegating certain tasks to other people so that you can now focus on the attract and the convert part and let someone else handle the deliver part. Does that make sense? Um, so it, it's important that we understand that because the whole cycle is attract, convert, deliver, right? We get people into our world, we, we convert them, we give them a great experience. And the goal after this whole entire cycle is that you have this client leaving the transaction, wanting to give you a five-star review. You created this new raving fan, right? This person that's like, they came in through Zillow or through a referral or however, they didn't know you. Now they went through this whole cycle with you and now they leave with this lasting impression of like, that's the person I'm always gonna go to for real estate. That's the person that I'm gonna always refer to. I mean, give them a five-star review, right? And it's something where, a lot of times, you know, as we get busier and stuff like that, we don't, we're not understanding the big picture of how all the dots connect and certain parts of that funnel start to get, you know, they're not being paid attention to, right? We're doing great. We're converting, you know, we're attracting business, we're converting them, but we're not really in tune with the experience that the clients get, right? And sometimes it's, it's not even because you don't mean to, it's just, you're just too busy, right? And you'll know if at the end you have an unhappy client. Right. Unfortunately, the only way to find out if someone had a shitty experience is at the end, once they've already had the shitty experience. That's kind of the only way to find out. Right. <laughs> All right. Or you ask them along the way. Right. Like you can pre put preventative measures that you ask them every week. Hey, just want to check in with you. Right. And this is something that you guys can take away. Maybe add this to your what you do, you know, is every Friday you call your clients just to do a customer service check in. Right. 
hey, I know we talked yesterday, right? About, you know, we submitted your offer. But what I do with my clients is every Friday I call and just want to check in on you. I just want to see how my service is. If there's any feedback you can give me to how, how I can improve my business going forward. And that's something you do no matter what, right? Every single week. That's how you get the real honest feedback and you know how to make tweaks and adjustments, right? But if, if you don't know the whole big picture of what you're trying to do, then you will never know the value of why you need to do that, right? Which is why part of why we're having this conversation, right? Is we need to know how all the dots connect and why all those pieces of the puzzle are extremely important. So in summary, guys, if you guys hit, you know, if you truly take this to heart and you truly understand this is the big, the game we're playing and you really like analyze your business, you can go back right now. Just think to yourself right now, like, how am I doing in the attract phase? Am I putting in the effort? Am I, do I have enough opportunity? Am I following up with my leads? You know, am I posting myself on social media? Am I like consistently attracting people to come into my world? You know, or am I just relying on the leads PRG gives me? Right. Remember, that's only part of the equation. Right. We talked about how much business comes from our SOI. 50%. Hey, guys, over here on your computers, how much business comes from our SOI? 50%. That's a big number, right? 50% of our business. So if we know that, then we got to ask ourselves, like, am I doing the things that I need to do? to get 50% of my business to come from my SOI. If we said the other 50% comes from what? At least for what we're, what PRG is doing, right? What's the other 50% of my mission? Online leads, right? So am I taking those leads and I'm really, am I really working those leads that I'm getting, right? Am I going deep with those? Am I really following up to make sure that my attract phase is covered, right? That's something you guys can all really just audit your own self and say, like, am I doing that? Then we move to the convert. You can really ask yourself a question. How confident am I when I go on an appointment, right? Am I tracking my numbers so I can actually see where my, what my conversion rate is? If I don't even know how many appointments I went on, set, met, signed, I don't know what my, you know, appointment set to met ratio is, or I don't know my met to signed ratio is. This is something you got to pay attention to now, right? You got to track your numbers so that you can know what you're doing. Because only when you know what you're doing, then you can come to me and say, hey, Enrique, you know, I'm noticing that, you know, I'm booking 80% of the appointments, you know, 60% are meeting with me, but I'm only signing like half of those. And I'm, okay, well, we've got to train you. I got I to gotta know what you're saying on your presentation. Right? And then we could do some role play or we can record it. And I could be like, dude, like, you got it backwards, bro. Like you've been saying it backwards this whole time, right? You've been saying it that way. Like, no, that's, that was last year's way. We do it this way now, right? And then you're like, oh shit, no wonder, right? Because the market's changed. So we don't say it that no way no more because that was two years ago when the market was different. We now say it this way. We repositioned our value proposition to be in line with what's happening in the market. But you won't know any of that information if you're not actually tracking, if you're not actually taking the time to study, if you're not constantly fine tuning your business, it's not a set it and forget it. It isn't like I learned the buyer presentation and I'm great now. It's no, I learned it now. Is that way still the best way to do it? Is that still the best buyer presentation that I could do? Or do I need to make some tweaks in how I present it? Or do I need to more maybe emphasize this part of the buyer presentation because that's more relevant today? you know, section two or whatever, right? Or finding the person in the room that's doing it the best. Yeah. Right? Role playing the best. That's the fastest way. Rob's doing it the best, trust me, I'm taking him to lunch, and I'm learning from him. Exactly, right? The fastest way is to, is to go tap on someone's shoulder. Hey, man, I noticed you're signing. You're, you're at 80%, you know, signed rate. What are you doing, right? Or Rob, host the training, right? Or, hey, I'm taking you to lunch. You know, I, I need to pick your brain. I like lunches, guys. Yeah, right? Rob likes lunch. He likes to eat. I'm a hungry guy. Feed yeah. the beast. <laughs> um, so, and remember, guys, like at the end of this process, right? Like now in the deliver process. Well, hey, you know, 
you know, honestly, I haven't been really paying attention to the deliver process. I've been getting in contract and I just been passing over the ladies and assuming they're running with it, you know, but I, I still need to see what's going on, right? If I just completely turn my mind off and I'm not doing checks and balances to make sure certain things are happening. Remember like our ladies are only human too, right? Our admin team, they're human as well. And they're trying to keep up with the demands and the workflow and we're adding more support and stuff like that. But it's a, it's a moving target a lot of times, right? You know, and things are changing because of the market, you know, stagers, for example, are not available, right? There's, just, there's things where we're having to pivot on different transactions because people are busy or whatever it might be, you know? So this is where you got to think like a manager, right? Like I want to know what's at least happening, or I want to do a check-in every week just to make sure we're on top, or I need to call my client just every week, just to make sure that delivery process is, is being handled, right? This is you now taking ownership of your business, right? When you call your client just to do a, a check-in on a Friday and just say, hey, how's everything going? How am I, how am I at, how's my admin team treating you? Do you have any questions, right? Is there anything we can do to improve our service? Is there anything maybe they missed that I need to, you know, we need to tweak? Client will tell you and the client will respect you. And the client will say like, you know, even if it hasn't been perfect, but you fix and adjust it, the client's going to have a great experience after that, right? And they will give you referrals. And maybe they weren't going to give you a referral because you never called and checked in on them. So it all is part of the overall strategy of how we do things, right? And then once you're done with that, you bring someone through the whole entire strategy, that person now becomes part of our database, right? That Zillow lead that was a stranger at first, we took them through this whole cycle. We, we, we hit all the, you know, all the marks. We gave them a great experience. They gave us a five-star review. That person now is moved from online lead to SOI. Where does half of our business come from? SOI. Now, for illustration purposes, and then we'll wrap up right now. Um, let's say you come into this business and you have no SOI, right? You're brand new. No, you're, your people don't trust you. You, you, know, you screwed them over, whatever. You're starting from fresh, right? Or you got no leads or whatever. You're brand, brand new, right? You don't have an SOI. You just graduated high school. I don't know, right? You moved in from a different state. You moved from a different state. No one knows you, right? You have no SOI here that's going to buy or sell with you. No one knows you as a real estate agent. No one knows your real estate agent, right? You were working on cars before this. I don't know. Whatever. Multiple scenarios, right? New to the business. Well, you use these online leads and these cold leads to build your database and build your SOI, right? So let's say from Zillow... You know, you came in here and you worked the system and you did what you're supposed to do and you closed 10 deals in your first year with us, right? Is that doable? Yeah, we got people doing three times that, right? 10 deals in your first year. Well, now those 10 deals that were online leads now turn into SOI. This is now your database, right? You move them through the funnel and now you drop them in this new bucket of SOI. So now you got these 10 people that you can call every few months and stay on top of, and you can invite them to all of our events, right? This is now where you're leveraging the team and you're doing some of your own work. Maybe you send them an email every month with the market update. You just forward them whatever MLS sends you and you put your logo on it, whatever it might be. And you're staying in touch with your database and you're calling them three times a year to invite them to our four events or whatever, right? Or you're taking them out for coffee or you're doing like Brian and taking them to, you know, fancy dinner with a bottle of wine. Doesn't matter, right? The point is you're staying in touch with these people. Out of these 10 online leads, you get four referrals, right? So next year, you have four referrals. Spell that right. Four referrals. And then you have another 10 online leads that you close, who now turn into your SOI, right? And then those 10 online leads, right, refer you how many? They refer you five. 
five referrals. But the first 10 refer you four, right? Look down. Five referrals, four referrals from the, the first 10, five referrals from the second 10. That's nine referrals. And then you close another 10 online leads, right? Cold ones. I don't know if this makes sense. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? You start getting the compound effect, right? Where your initial 10, you had no database. You worked them through the whole cycle. You created raving fans. They're now giving you referrals and you're constantly adding from these cold sources. You're doing a great job and you're moving them over to your database, your SOI. And you're leveraging all the things the team the team is doing, the events, the all those client appreciation things, and you're milking the shit out of you know social media, and you're posting every single win you have, documenting all your success, right? And then what happens is like all these people, you add them on social media as well. All your clients who are cold, they're now your friends on social media, and they see you constantly posting on there, and the referrals just start coming in. And at the same time, you're feeding in your pipeline with the online leads that the team is giving you. That's it, guys. It's like, it's as simple as that. Like, there's no need to like go farm and like do all these other things and, you know, do these special drip campaigns that, you know, send an email at two in the morning and a bot talks to them. Like, we make it a lot harder than it is, guys. It's really get a lead, service it, run it through the entire cycle and then now move that bad boy to your SOI and continue to provide value to that person so that they continue to feed you referrals. It's that simple, you know, but here's one thing about that, right? Like I, I know I present it well, I'm, I'm making it sound exciting, but for some of you guys, it's not that exciting, right? It's like, it's funner to try this new thing, right? And that's human nature, right? We always want to like some people's personality. We always want to be trying something new or in the know, but it's not, it's not rocket science, guys. It's really, this is the overall strategy. This is a strategy that we've implemented over the last five years that has resulted in over 500 transactions to be closed. And we took the same concepts from there and we're now implementing that into our mortgage team and hundreds and hundreds of transactions are closing there. So the proof is there, guys. The proof that it works is there. It isn't like theory, oh, it sounds great, Enrique, you know, but show me, you know, show me the money. It's there, right? The key thing is teaching everyone how to, how to do this, right? And executing this and then making sure like all the pieces of the puzzle are being executed as best as possible. I think the other thing, guys, is that we get presented a lot with ideas, right? And sometimes, like how Kika just said, that you know it might sound cold or it might sound straightforward but listen guys we're speaking from experience guys right a lot of the shiny syndromes we had early on in our career right so it's really easy for us it might sound like we're shooting someone down like really quick but trust me it's not that we're shooting you guys down it's more that we've already gone down that process already and know hey listen we still got something better at the moment now can we pivot will we pivot we've had pivoted many years in the past but we've when that we've done short sales, yeah. we've done flip. We've, we've always adjusted. We've done it all, guys. The, the, the things that will pivot throughout this process, the overall strategy is not going to pivot. Yeah. That's a constant that's always going to remain, right? Attract, convert, deliver, deliver a good client experience, repeat the process, move them to your SOI. That's always going to, right? The part that pivots is like, are there certain things that are working better right now? Maybe our online leads, are they too expensive? Does it make sense to tweak that, right? This is now where you're going like deep into the business and kind of picking apart the certain things, right? Do we have to adjust our presentation, right? To keep in line with what's happening in the market. This is now where you're like now picking your stuff apart and fine tuning and tweaking, right? Let's say like tomorrow, like the internet got canceled, right? There was no more internet, right? Like, I don't know. Went to war, the internet, internet's gone. It's a new law. There's no more internet. I don't know. Then at that point, right, then we would have to say, okay, well, then what's our, we go back to attract, right? What's our attract thing now? We got to go back to door knocking or, or, or cold calling mm -hmm. face to face. It's still attract, right? That's at that time when there's no internet, that's probably the most efficient way now. But because there is internet, there's a more efficient way to do things right now, right? 
where you could, this is why we do stuff on Zoom. This is why some of you guys are watching this on Zoom right now, instead of having all to be here in the classroom. You adapt to the market, you pivot to what's available. You use technology to enhance what you're already doing, not to replace what you're doing. All right, guys, uh, feedback and questions, and we are done. I know we went a little bit over, but I hope, hopefully some light bulbs went off. Hopefully you guys can, the goal of this is that you guys look at the business in a different way now, right? You're like, okay. Yeah, even teach it, that's good job. But even for people that have been with us for a while, I think it's good to revisit what the path is, right? What the goal is or how we're running the business. Right? So again, even, even for some of you guys that have been with us for quite some time, it's good to see this again. Because I know we went over it before, but to see it again, especially we have newer people in the, in the room in the office, to see what, what, the, what the goal is, what the strategy is. It's easy to forget, right? It's easy to forget, like, you know, and that's, that's the thing. Like, if you want to go, if I wanted to travel from here and take a straight shot to New York right now, like, I would have to map out, like, the most straight path to get there, right? If I want to get there in the quickest amount of time. But if I'm constantly, like, taking a different freeway or going somewhere else or doing a detour here, like, how much longer is it going to take to get there right and that's the thing right like the the path from like brand new agent to successful agent right someone who's producing at a high level there's proven things that right like proven fundamentals in business that work where if you just follow that right and we've done it you're going to get there in the shortest amount of time it's when you start trying to deviate from the process and trying to make up your own way and all that stuff it's a lot harder, right? And collectively, we see that as a team, we're a lot more powerful collectively because we get to leverage the success of each other. We get to leverage each other for, uh, knowledge. for knowledge, for time, right? Leverage people on the team to help you show, to do all these different things, be in more places at once. We are a lot more powerful working as a team, right? To, to create more market share and take over than as one person trying to figure it all out. You also don't know what you don't know right? Like that's, that's the thing too. So back to what I'm saying is that if you want to get to the path of success in the least amount of time, there has to be a tried and true fundamental business strategy that you follow. And you have to try to stay on that path, you know, as diligently as possible. Have we veered off? Yeah, we've veered off plenty of times, right? You know, and we go back and we go back and we get coached and we go, we look at that and we look at other teams and model and it's like, the end of the day, like there's no magic bullet. It's having something that works, that's tried and true, having the systems in place and sticking to it. Consistency is the key to success in this business. Because by the time you go figure out your brand new lead source or your brand new farm or your brand new bot or whatever, I've already made strides and leaps with what I was already doing four years ago that are just compounding and building a lot faster. I just showed you like the path of compounding like your online leads to get in referrals and all that, right? You guys can all see that, like do the math. It'll start growing. That thing, that snowball is going so fast by the time someone is still trying to reinvent the wheel, right? So this is where you got to be really skeptical before you let any new things into your world as well. Because if it's not in alignment, in align with the overall vision where you're trying to go, all it's going to do is, is pull you in a different direction, right? Your straight shot to New York is not no longer a straight shot. Right. And if you're on a boat and you got everyone rowing the same way, that boat's going to move faster. It's going to get to the finish line a lot, a lot quicker. But if everyone's rowing in different directions, you're just going to spin in circles. Right. <laughs> That's what happens. Um, give me some feedback, some comments. Give me uh, what's the biggest takeaway you got from today and we will be done.